Hi, I'm Jason Mears. I'm a senior systems engineer in the UK and I'm going to take you through the quick STDC overview, um, a, a basic introduction into the software defined data center. Um, so to begin with, we have a few common components which most of you will be aware of, which is uh, vCenter Server, vSphere, vSAN and NSX. So vCenter is the central point of administration for a local site or a local data center. Uh, vSphere or ESXi is the um, local hypervisor. Um, th this, is, um, this is the part that turns the, the compute, uh, the, the CPU and the RAM into a pool that can be used by virtual machines. Uh, the next there is vSAN, which is our software defined storage product, which takes commodity storage already in the vSphere host and turns it into a shared storage array or a shared pool of storage. And then we also have NSX, which is our software defined networking product, which can bring um, networking capabilities up into the hypervisor with some context and visibility of the VMs that are running on that hypervisor. Um, you may have seen these before individually. Uh, vCenter Server, for instance, is usually bought as a standalone product. Uh, vSphere, vSAN, and NSX can also be bought as a standalone product, but you may see bundles things like vCloud Foundation, uh, vCloud Suite, vRealize Suite, you may see them bundled in other products. If you do buy um, these three products as vCloud Foundation, it'll also come with another product which is known as SDDC Manager, which is our lifecycle manager for all of the products you see down at the bottom here, vSphere, vSAN and NSX. So SDDC Lifecycle Manager is a piece of software that can manage, maintain, patch and update all those components in vCloud Foundation. Um, what happens when you've got that software defined compute, software defined storage and software defined networking is that you're able to move virtual machines, services and applications from one data center to another. So let's say for instance you have a second data center at another site running the same software or maybe you've got a cloud provider, a, a VMware cloud provider which is also running the VMware software components but in their own data center on their own hardware and you're essentially leasing or renting the service rather than buying everything yourself outright. So as I said, once you've got these core components down at the bottom software defined compute, storage and networking we have this ability to move virtual machines from one data center to another data center or a cloud provider. Um, we, we include tools to do that. There are uh, certain storage arrays and, and storage vendors do have replication technology to move data from one place to another, but we also have something included with uh, every version of vSphere called vSphere Replication. This will replicate virtual machine data and storage from one place to another, regardless of the type of software um, or the type of storage array underneath. So it, it's hardware agnostic and, and storage device agnostic. So included in every copy of vSphere is this vSphere replication and lots of customers will use that to replicate the data from the primary site, this data center here, to either a second data center or another cloud provider. So that will get your virtual machines and your data there. Some customers also optionally go for a product called Site Recovery Manager, which is a way of automating the recovery. So not only do you get the virtual machines and the data at the other site, but it puts some um, sense of uh, you know, rationale behind which machines to, to start in which order. So you've got the replication itself, you've got the run book, as we call it, which tells you which machines to bring up in which order, because some virtual machines might depend on others. And depending on what the network looks like at the other site, either Data Center 2 or the cloud provider, we can also fix up the networking so that the virtual machines start and are, and are available on the network, even though it might be in a, in a physically separate site. So they're the core products for the, the infrastructure part. And as I say, you'll hear other things in other, in other demonstrations and other bits of training where you hear about vCloud Foundation. Just to illustrate that again, that is the ability to bundle vSphere, software defined compute, vSAN, software defined storage, and NSX, software defined networking into a single product or product bundle, uh, all managed and maintained by the SDDC lifecycle manager. So once you've got your infrastructure uh, and you've got the ability to run it in one or more data centers or cloud providers, what you then need is some intelligence around 
um, the cloud management of that. Now, when I say cloud, it doesn't have to be a cloud provider. Lots of people re refer to their own data centers, data center one or data center two, as a private cloud. Essentially, a private cloud is nothing more than a, a, a virtualization platform which has got some sense of intelligence or automation. So again, you'll hear the terms private cloud and public cloud. In my mind, private cloud is what we all used to call the, the server room or the data center. So once you've got all this data and all these virtual machines, applications and services scattered across multiple sites or cloud providers, what you really need is a, is a single platform um, for management of that platform. A, a single platform where you've got visibility of what's going on, you've got some insights into what's happening on the platform, some insights into the cost of running things um, and the cost of moving things to a to an alternate cloud or an alternate cloud provider, and then ability then an ability to do some kind of automation or self service at the user end. So we have a product suite called the V Realize platform, which is made up of four key components. The first one, which you may have heard of, is V Realize Operations or V Rops. That's the bit that tells you about health, waste, and efficiency, things that are going wrong now or things that will go wrong in future if you don't do something about them. Log Insight is a way of correlating um, logs from various points all into one place because usually when something goes wrong it's because something just changed. So Log Insight plugs into all our products and all our services but there are also content packs which plug into third party hardware, software and even physical machines so that they can be integrated into this single view of the world. Uh, Vrealize Business, again, a very popular product with our customers. It tells you how much it's costing to run a virtual machine in a particular data center, how much it would cost to run it in a different data center, or even how much it would cost to move to another cloud provider or back from a cloud provider to on site. So, this is a, a part that puts the intelligence and the real world costs around it. If you've also got Vrealize Operations, Operations can tell business how much of those resources you're wasting and therefore it can also report on not just the total cost but how much of that cost is actually wasted because you're not building machines efficiently. Uh, the next part to go with that is automation. I tend to think this as a, as a self-service vending machine where you can put a blueprint or an item into the vending machine. Somebody can walk up, press the button, see how much it would cost to build that particular application, virtual machine or service and if, if they want to go ahead and build it, they can put in their own credentials in there and basically take responsibility for it. But before we'll build it for them, we want to know who's responsible for it, who's paying for it, how often, how long you need that application or service for, and what's going to happen at the end of that um, period of time. Are we just going to delete it? Are we going to archive it or move it to somewhere else? So four individual products, but together they are the vRealize platform or the vRealize suite. Again, with vRealize Suite, we have this, this concept of a lifecycle management tool, which is the vRealize Suite Lifecycle Manager. Again, that's a software appliance which is which can take responsibility for patching and updating all of these components. So that was vRealize Suite. So just to go back again, we've got vCenter Server, which is local management of a data center. We've got software defined compute, storage and networking, which gives you the software defined data center. We tend to bundle that in a product called vCloud Foundation. Um, we've got vRealize Suite, which are these four products at the top here. And if you decide to use vRealize Suite as well as vSphere in the same bundle or the same SKU, that's what we call vCloud. So vCloud Foundation vRealize Suite and vRealize Suite plus vSphere is vCloud Suite. In addition to our uh, vRealize Suite, we also have vRealize Network Insight. So this is a companion product to NSX, the product we have down here, the software defined networking, and this gives you visibility of what's going on on your network, whether that be a virtual network or a physical network. Lots of customers tend to deploy this before they uh, or, or use this before they deploy uh, NSX on top of a physical network. Again, two companion products that work together. They can be bought separately, but work better together. And then following on from that, we also have some cloud services. So lots of the features and functionality you can buy in vRealize Suite, there will be hosted or SaaS software as a software versions of these two. So if you want to look at um, business and cost, you can do that as a, as a cloud service. If you want to do something like operations, there are equivalences in, in, again, in our cloud services where you can do a similar kind of management and monitoring. 
Um, the other thing which um, some customers are ready for and others aren't are things like containers. So if you've heard anything around Docker, containers, Kubernetes, we have an ability to run containers uh, natively on top of vSphere on your own data center or for larger, more enterprise grade deployments, we've also got services around Pivotal. Um, again, both container based, but I tend to think of these as being, if you have a few containers you want to run alongside vSphere, use our integrated containers on vSphere. If you're doing this at, a, at an enter enterprise level or slightly more seriously, probably should be looking at Pivotal, which is um, a, a SaaS solution or an online service. So we have at the bottom, we've got all the infrastructure components and all the things that allow you to move between data centers. Up at the top, we've got more of the management suite and the management components. And if we move up to the top, we've also got other things that we can plug on top of this infrastructure. So end user computing and mobility, the kind of thing that we used to describe as being VDI or, or um, you know, virtual desktops. So we've got a product or a product suite known as Horizon, which does end user computing, which does that delivery of desktops. We've also got a product called Airwatch, which is enterprise mobility management for managing mobile devices and access from mobile devices. And you will see those two products combined into Workspace ONE, which is our vision for a complete digital workspace where we can run any application on any, app, uh, on any device from anywhere in the world. And, and all these products talk together. You will find if you've got something like Horizon and Airwatch and Workspace, when you connect into the network, they can even talk to things like NSX to, to create the security or a secure tunnel right from the device out on the internet to the desktop that we're going to through the networking right down to the hypervisor. So the more of our products you have, the better the integration is with them and the more capable each of them gets. Um, an often overlooked part is that we, we also have validated designs for all of our uh, products and suites. So these are completely free, you can download these from the website, but if you like the look of our stuff but you don't know where to start or you think it might be quite complex to deploy them, I'd recommend have a look in at the validated designs or VVDs as we call them. We've also got a range of education uh, and educational courses and learning, so some of these are free, some of these are paid for. And if you've done the uh, education through myvmware.com, you might also want to take certifications for that, uh, where, you can, where you can gain a, a qualification saying that you're competent in this particular product or suite. And then on top of that, that's, that's all kind of like the software and the design side of things, but we also have services around people or professional services. So we have advisory services, Advisory services tend to be brought in relatively early into the conversation or the engagement and advisory services will tell the customer without mentioning products specifically what they should be doing or what they should be looking at in order to, to perform a digital transformation. The next part, OTS, Operational Transformation Services, this is about people and process. So if you take for an example the fact that you might virtualize your desktops using Horizon, uh, you might use Airwatch for enterprise mobility management and give a user a brand new digital workspace. If your users still use it the same way that they did the, the traditional PC sat at a desk uh, going into work every day, you might not actually achieve any kind of benefits and there might need to be some changes in working habits to best take advantage or best leverage the investment in technology. An OTS is the, is the place or the people that can talk you around, the, the people and process around uh, creating a brand new IT environment or or modernizing an environment. And then last we have uh, the delivery of the products, the professional services organization. So professional services organization is a, is a team of engineers and programmers and, and other technical resources that can help a customer actually deliver a product or a service into the business. In my opinion, it tends to work better when PSO engage with the customer and work with the customer rather than just turn up uh, implement the product and then go away again, tend to find that if the customer is involved in the engagement, they take responsibility for it and they learn something from it. It's almost the analogy about teach a man to fish and he'll, he'll eat, eat for the rest of his life rather than give him a fish and he'll eat for a day. So professional services again. What I would say about these um, services here is consider them right at the start of the engagement with the customer rather than just add them on afterwards. So that, that's an overview of the of the key components in the software defined data center. What I also wanted to mention, because we got lots of, of um, what you could call point solutions here, you could deploy most of these individually. One of the benefits um, that you get with with VMware and with 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 all the suites and vCenter server is all of these individual products and, and tools 
actually plug straight into to vCenter server. So when you add all these things like NSX and replication um, and data protection and hybrid cloud and those other things there, they're not separate tools and they're not separate interfaces that the administrators or, or administrators need to learn in order to manage a product. They just bolt into the existing vCenter server framework, which now also works in HTML5, which means that you no longer need to download a program, uh, which means you can use it on PCs, Apple Macs, uh, mobile devices and tablets. So it, it now works across a, a broader range of devices without any software to install. As an example of this, this is an example of vSphere replication. So rather than be a separate product or a separate tool, I can literally just right click on a virtual machine here and I get a list of options for what do I want to do with replication. So I want to pause it, stop it, synchronize it now, move it to somewhere else or actually perform a recovery. Do I want the backup version of this to now become the live version? So not only will it recover it, but it will, all tell, it will also tell the rest of the VMware components that the current version or the new version is now at this data center rather than the other and, and everything you know, gets updated accordingly. Um, another example of that is this is an example of vRealize operations, so our health and risk and monitoring type tool. So instead of having to go into a separate tool every time you want to have a look at the health or the, the current state of the environment, um, just an example here that has been as part of being in vCenter itself, you can see this kind of information in context. So you no longer need separate teams to do this or separate processes or separate tasks for people to look at monitoring. It, it, all the information you need is in context that, as you do in your existing job. So that was a very simple overview of the, the key components that are in a software defined data center. One of the benefits of them being that they all plug into a single user interface, so even though you might have 15 or 20 VMware products and solutions, they still all fit into the same vCenter server management interface. So that was the quick introduction from me. There will be other videos which we're going to a bit more depth and a bit more detail on each one, but thank you very much for your time.